Hi, I hope you'll join me for today's tutorial painting this pink and yellow floral bouquet in a white milk pitcher. Today I'll be using my size 6 Intuition flat and round brushes. I have my Simi Art and Sonnet watercolors. I have my palette all ready to go. I have two jars of water, one for rinsing my dirty brush and the other for using with my watercolors. And I'm also using my 350 GSM watercolor paper from Dollar Tree. This is pre-cut to a 4x5, cut from the 8x10 pads that, that are purchased for $3 at Dollar Tree. So I hope you'll join me. Let's get started. What I want to do first is just kind of lightly outline the shape of this pitcher. And, you know, you don't have to worry too much because you can, you can erase this and, you know, you can erase however much of it and, you know, leave it kind of light. I have found that um, I prefer to just trace it in really light and then leave it if I can just because, and I know you can use special erasers for this, but uh, but it can, you know, kind of affect the texture of your paper. <sighs> Gosh, I had a really large amount of graphite just come out on that. So I must have kind of broken my lead somehow. But anyway, so I'm just tracing this in, drawing this in, trying to do it lightly. But again, I, you know, I'm not too worried because you can erase this away. And then I want to just lightly again, kind of um, plan out some of my florals. And the reason I am kind of penciling this in is because these are going to be yellow and I'm going to leave those somewhat un, unpigmented, un, um, unwatercolored. So I'm just kind of lightly erasing this out. I want to leave some. I'm not really worried about the pencil marks for the flower areas, but that's just giving me an idea. I, I plan to do probably a yellow, excuse me, a blue background with these yellow flowers. And I, I just know that I'll end up with some green if, if I don't kind of uh, keep that from being... Um, included in my background and yes you could use masking fluid and absolutely that's something to do but this is just a quick little painting and so I don't want to use masking fluid I want to I want to do this just you know in a quick manner if I had a, a quick little need for or a need for a quick little card or something like that um, I would want something I could just put together quickly and now I'm noticing, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I did not rinse my jar super well because I can see the slightest tinge of my pink pigment. <laughs> and I have two jars of water here, and so I'm going to go ahead and dip in the other jar, which, yes, is cleaner. So just trying to be mindful of where I want these yellow flowers and then trying to work around that. And so I'm just, you know, just getting this entire background wet. And you know, I, I think I was seeing this pink, but I think it's in my brush and not in my background water. Okay, that's a thing that happens and I'm not, uh, you're going to be so shocked, but when I say I'm not going to worry about it, I really mean it. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so then I want to come in one more time just around this picture. Just to be sure that I really have a good amount of water. And I'll start with this first. And I want to use my, oh, I think I want Ocean today had my palette upside down, my my watercolor palette, my paints. So I had to kind of turn that back around. 
Okay, and get this in kind of quick and then start blending it out quickly. Otherwise, you know, sometimes it just kind of wants to uh, make, um, it wants to keep, you know, kind of some hard lines there. Okay. And I want this nice and loose. So, you know, I actually like what happened here when I added some water and pigment. I'm not concerned if my background is not perfect. I, I kind of like that. I like the little bit of uh, rough or vintage look it kind of has for me. So, you know, do what you like. Obviously, this is for you. So if you like a, uh, a more defined and more perfect line there, then by all means get your get your tape out and tape that edge I think there is room for all the techniques and nothing is better or more right it's just what you like and how you want to create so I think you can see where I'm leaving these little clusters these little areas for flowers and just leaving that kind of un, um, unpigmented. Okay, for now I like it. I maybe want to um, come in with just a little more water and pigment up in this background here. I just think I'm going to want some just kind of uh, give that a little more depth back there I think I think that's going to look so nice with the yellow okay and maybe just a bit more down here for some natural shadow okay rinse that brush out and uh, and then I'm grabbing my size 6 round and I just want to work around this little handle I really do not want to be perfectionist about it however I would like that handle to be just a touch smoother it's uh it's kind of a wonky shape and I feel like I really have too much pigment in my brush, so I'm just trying to kind of get that handled. Now, I've put some water into my paint here, and so it's going to push some of that out. It'll push some of the pigment out, which is okay. Okay, let's not get too perfectionist about that. You can see I went into my little picture there and I would just rather not be too worried about it. We want a quick little card and so we're just gonna we're just gonna keep this nice and casual. This is not going in the Louvre. So I just uh, kind of brushed on the inside of this handle where I think the where the handle would be open and I brush that with water and then I just drop some pigment into it so that we could see the background through it uh, and then I want to go ahead and get started with my yellow and what I want to do is I just want to have these little cluster areas these areas of these little clustered flowers i'm going to dot in with a good amount of wet pigment so really wet just these dots i do not mind if they go off of the yellow or off of the white spot and go into the blue a bit but my goal is that the majority of this is just kind of in this circle so that I 
am not having to deal with green that I have a more isolated yellow on the blue. So now after I have these dots, I'm going in with a brush that I've rinsed and then I've also just kind of dragged it along my jar to, to get rid of most of the water. And I'm just going to brush little petal shapes into these yellow dots that I've made. And um, not, not trying to make them perfectly you know, spaced or anything like that. I, I don't care if they overlap. It's just the idea of these uh, cheerful little clusters of yellow flowers. So just making these petal shapes, just tiny little dabs of, of water, just touching the yellow. And for this, I'm using my Yellow Deep. And see, I'm just touching, just touching. I just have water on the tip of my brush and I'm just touching that to these little yellow dots. And then because there is some pigment transfer, I do like to take what seems to be left on my brush and I like to go and just kind of make a few extra petals. So it's that residual pigment and just going and touching that around, maybe kind of on the outside of these clusters. I want these nice and, and full. Okay, and the reason I only did two of these little dotty areas and then came back to do the third was because I really felt that my dots of pigment would dry before I could get to those, before I could get to all three. So I decided to limit how big of an area I had pigment on. So it wouldn't be just, you know, drying needlessly because then I'd have to come back and just do more pigment. So this way, you know, I'm just working a smaller area at a time. And, you know, play with it because maybe you like it when the pigment just starts to dry, gives you kind of more of a, a gradient there. I like to work while they're still somewhat wet. And then what I think I'll do is go in with just a little more pigment and just dot it here and there. I want some, I want some nice gradients. And I don't want to turn it all, obviously. I don't want it all dark. I don't want it all light. So I like the idea of also having some of this white peeking out because it could be parts of those flowers too. Okay, like it. So now I want to take, and this is really quite dry. My background, the blue, which is great. That's what I wanted. So. Now I'm going to take my Matter Lake Red, my favorite pink. This is actually really pretty on the blue. It makes kind of a lilac, I think, and, uh, and it's really pretty. But we're going to do the same kind of thing in that we're, um, we're going to make some centers for these flowers. And look, I kind of bled into that. I touched that yellow. And that's okay. I kind of do these like U's that kind of come up to uh, or down to almost a circle, but not quite. Okay. And, uh, and I don't want symmetry here, so I'm just trying to make sure not to, uh, not to create anything very symmetric. And I do want to dab... Actually, I'm going to use my brush. And what I did was I rinsed and I then I blotted my brush to take that pigment out. And I don't mind. It still may bleed into that a bit, especially after I add water. But at least this way, I'm not losing a lot of, you know, detail and whatnot. I want these flowers to be kind of larger as far as the petals by comparison. And all I did was rinse my brush and I'm taking clean water and I'm brushing a good bit of that off, but I do have, 
I do have a good bit of water left on my brush. And this is, you know, four or five or so petals. Not being very picky about it. And again, I don't I don't mind at all if the if they are bleeding together with the other flowers. I'm just occasionally rinsing that out and kind of unloading some of that water. I do try to be aware of which direction my flowers are going. I kind of like them going different directions like they would in an arrangement. And see how this pigment here has dried a bit and so you know it's acting a little bit different it's just not quite as juicy it's not quite as flowy and that is okay I like it a little bit of uh, pigment still left on my brush so I'm just kind of painting some just some little petal shapes Can add a little pigment into the base of those if you do that and just kind of adds a little depth or dimension add a couple of petals here and then I feel like these yellow flowers kind of turned into almost a hydrangea kind of look and I'm not sure if there are yellow hydrangeas but I think there are some kinds of um, off off white maybe but but that's fun so you know, it doesn't have to be, art doesn't have to be only what exists in reality, obviously. So I love that. Okay, I want to do one more out here, I think. One more of these. And, and we'll go real easy on, on that one there. Okay, this one maybe. There we go. Again, no worries if your pigments bleed. It's just something to play with and enjoy. Okay, I like that. So I want to go in with, um, I usually use my burnt sienna when I, um, when I make any of these cluster flowers. And, uh, and I want it kind of light, but I just want to go in and now this is okay if some of your yellow is still um, wet, but just kind of pay attention to it to see how it's doing. But I like to paint a few stems in here. And when it's wet, it's interesting because it will kind of bleed. And again, it just makes some dimension that is actually really nice. I, I like it. I feel like it just gives a little more, um, a little more depth to those flowers. And it's just so easy to do. So some of these I like to make in a little V. You'll see. And I feel like some of those were maybe a little dark, but, and you can soften that. That'd be super easy to do. You just take your brush, wet it, um, either, either kind of drag it on the side of your jar or blot it. I just kind of blotted mine. And then see, we just soften those a little bit. Cute. It's really fun. And really quick, after this, we'll do some leaves just for the these pink flowers and see what we do there. And then it will be done. Add a little shadow for the pitcher. But yeah, I love these quick little, quick little card. You could make this, um, you know, for any kind of occasion. You could even make this as a little framed print. It would be a very cute get well thing for someone in the hospital. or And you just never know when you're going to need a little... Just a nice little card. But see that brown just added such nice little accent there. I like that. So now I'm going to take my olive green and 
I am um, going to make some leaves. And let me tell you, while I'm getting my green ready, you have so many options with this pitcher. You can make this pitcher glass, it can be see-through. You could make a pattern on this pitcher. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing, but whatever it is, it's going to be so fun. So when I do my leaves, I like to go kind of from one side to another so that I'm uh, balancing kind of the tones so that if I get something real dark on one side, I can kind of balance that with something dark on the other side. And uh, I think that works real well for me. Um, I do tend to notice, and that's one of the things I can be kind of picky about. And here I did bleed some green into that petal, and it's actually kind of okay. But I did blot it because I don't, I don't want a ton of green in that. And then that can be, you know, easily kind of fixed if necessary in that, you know, you can just put some more of the pink in there. It's really, um, it's very easy to do. So then just kind of, you know, going different directions with these leaves. I, uh, I never have a really good plan for, for my leaves and they can be kind of, uh, kind of difficult, but, um, because I want to keep this kind of simple, I'm not really going to add any other, um, I don't know any other kinds of leaves, I don't think. Um, I just want to keep this real, real simple. There are just a lot of options with that. I went in here, I wanted a little more definition at the spout of my pitcher, and so I that's what I just did. I just gave that a little definition there, and it's okay that it's obscured somewhat by the flowers. It's really fine, but I just felt like... Um, like the definition wasn't quite there, so so I felt like it needed that. And then I wanna go in with a quick shadow. I like to use my Payne's Gray for this, or the color of the blue, actually. Either one of those would be really great. And see what I mean about that, just that lovely, it's kind of an orchid color. I just really, really like that. So I'm gonna go in and wet this and then I'll come back with my Payne's Gray and just a little bit of it and just kind of spread that. And I'm kind of going to let it do what it wants there. I put some water in there and so it can just kind of bleed into that water. I like it. I like it a lot. And just kind of blend that just a little. Okay. And I just kind of want to leave that as it is. I like it in the white. Again, you could do stems. You could do stems and then a waterline. And then just take and add just lightly, lightly, either some of your blue or maybe even some of your Payne's Gray. And, and as you wet, kind of below the waterline, you can also wet your stems. Let that bleed just a little bit. I wouldn't go crazy with it. But I want to leave this as just a a white milk glass pitcher with this simple, simple bouquet. I hope that you enjoyed this today. I hope that you'll paint it or let me know whether you painted it and, uh, and whether you enjoyed it. And uh, as always, happy painting.